Aubrey. And I'm Mia. And we are from Techno DI. And today we are going to be reviewing the iPad Air 2. Let's get this review started. Now to Mike, our dad, for the review. What's up YouTube? Mike from Techno GI and today we are doing the comprehensive review of the iPad Air 2. So first is we're going to just kind of look at the hardware. I spoke of this during the unboxing, but as you can see, I mean, it is 18% thinner. It is, or I say, yeah, 18% thinner. Uh, it is lighter uh, fractionally. And again, here's the original. I did put the case back on this rig, so now it's extremely fat. But um, uh, you're definitely going to want to protect it, although it looks so good without a case. But again, for the hardware, it is 18% thinner than its predecessor. Also, it's... Uh, so the total thickness is 6.1 millimeters, but um, again, you're going to want to put a case, so that's really going to negate all that. But uh, again, it's 0.96 pounds, so it is lighter. There is uh, one notice thing you'll notice between this and the original. I forgot to mention is um, there is they got rid of this button. I don't know if you can see it, but there because of the thinness, there's no longer a screen orientation lock button. So if that was a a big deal breaker for you, then I guess you, you would want to stick with the original. But um, we can take a look at the screen here. The screen, uh, really, it, it's the exact same uh, brightness, same size, 9.7 inch, same megapixels. It's 2048 by 1536. Um, but one thing they did add, an improvement, is they added a anti-reflective um, coating to it, which is uh, kind of hard to see on here. But um, it's much better. I noticed as I was playing with the original iPad and playing with this, it is uh, definitely noticeable. There's not near as much glare. So if you're someone who likes to hang out outside of the park, park bench, whatever, do a lot of reading on your iPad, uh, this may be worth the upgrade because it, it is easier to read in brighter conditions. Uh, as far as the camera goes, they did upgrade the um, rear camera. But if you're one of those people that run around taking a picture with your iPad, it just... I don't know, it's kind of weird, but I guess it works in a pinch. But it is now a 8 megapixel. Uh, the quality is better. They did add some stabilization. Along with that, you've got more features within the camera. I don't know if you can see it. But you now have slow-mo, and you also have a, a burst mode. But So if you're an iPhone 6 owner and you like the slow-mo feature, now you can do the exact same thing on your iPad. Um, but as far as the front facing camera for FaceTime, they did not upgrade that at all. It's still same location, but it is uh, just a 1.2 megapixel. Uh, again, it's sufficient for FaceTime or whatever, but uh, they did not upgrade that. But uh, as opposed to your original, you did have a 5 megapixel, yeah, 5 megapixel, now you got an 8. So the camera is better. I did do some pictures and some video just to see the difference, and it is noticeable. So if you are a... Um, iPad photographer, and it, it, it'll be up your alley. And another change to the hardware is they relocated where the um, microphone was, so now it's over. It's over here. But, uh, as far as performance goes, definitely, definitely a difference in this. Um, this has got the A8X chip, is what they're calling it. This has got your A7. Uh, this is actually a three-core processor. And as I was playing around opening different apps. Um, it is snappier. This by no means was slow, but um, this actually, and the more I'm playing with the iPad Air 2, this one kind of feels a little sluggish, um, but it's not. So if, if you have this, you're happy with it, there's really no reason to upgrade. But it's where you're really going to notice the increase in uh, performances if you're running like um, using GarageBand on this or iPhoto or uh, some gaming is really where, is where you're going to see the boost in the performance and frame rate. And, um, that brings me to one of my real gripes and pet peeves about the new iPad is uh, it now has two gigabytes of RAM as opposed to one. Uh, the AX, A8X chip uh, performance has been great. You can go to the different websites and run the graphics test, the um, SunSpider. There's plenty of websites where you can do the benchmark test. And this is actually a, a smoke in it. So my question, I guess, would be to Apple is why didn't you add a true multitasking? I mean, you still have the same thing where you can double clip this and, uh, you know, pick an app that you want. But really, um, that's kind of a pain in the butt. 
I would love to. I wish Apple would do this. Apple, I hate you for this. I have a love-hate relationship with Apple. I wish you could have two screens up, you know, split screen, true multitasking where I could have, say I want to watch a YouTube video at the same time I want to have a Facebook open. Or if I want to do productivity, like I do on my Surface Pro 3, I can have, you know, a PowerPoint presentation open and I can have a PDF open. Or I can have one note, I can take notes. So this has got the horsepower to do it. And that is just one of the things that I hate, I hate to hate about Apple. Um, you can get that feature but you have to jailbreak your device. Um, so if you jailbreak it, you can get the full potential. You can use a mouse with this if you jailbreak it. You can do split screen if you jailbreak it. Um, you shouldn't have to jailbreak it, so I don't know. I wish Apple would get their, their act together there, but the performance of this thing is noticeably faster. It's very zippy. Um, I couldn't get any lag. Um, even web pages load quicker. Um, I believe they did boost up the actual Wi-Fi in this, uh, so it is faster in that respect. So all around, it is a faster device, a thinner device, lighter device. Um, but as far as battery goes, it advertises 10 hours of battery, and I did not do a drain test. I just went on the line and just kind of researched it. But the battery is smaller because they made it thinner. They had to make it smaller. And from the benchmarks that I've been reading, um, for normal use, web browsing, uh, you'll get your 10 hours, but uh, if you're going to do a lot of video, streaming HD video, this will actually get better battery life, and that's simply because it's got a bigger battery. Um, so, um, is it worth the cost of it being thinner and lighter? I mean, personally, I prefer more battery, so I would rather it be a little bit thicker and give me about 12 to 15 hours of battery, uh, but that's just me. That's my preference. You may think something else. And, of course, the biggest addition to the uh, iPad Air 2 is the Touch ID, and I really didn't think I would be using it a lot. I didn't think that I would care for it, but it, it once you start using it, it is actually so much quicker. I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not, um, but of course I got to put my thumb the exact right way. But so much quicker. So previously, of course, you had to type in your pen, or if you didn't want to have a pen, but you can also use this for doing purchases at the App Store, iTunes. So. I do like the Touch ID quite a bit, so that is kudos there. Um, but again, some of the cons I noticed is the no multitasking, smaller battery, not being able to use a mouse, you know, and this is a 16 gigabyte model and I'm going to have to return it. I mean, I thought I could get away with 16 gigs, but it's just way too small. Um, don't even bother buying a 16 gigabyte model. For $100 more, you can go up to 64 gigs, so totally not worth it. Um, you know, you download a couple movies and games, you're done. Like newer games, you're looking at, you know, a gig and a half, three gigs for a game. So 16 gigabytes, just just pass on it. Um, not worth it. So I'll actually be returning this and getting a 64 gigger. Um, so totally not worth it. And again, if you are a current iPad Air owner, um, it's not necessarily a big enough jump to merit the upgrade unless you're going to, you know, unless you just got extra money or... Me, I'm just selling this one on eBay to defer the cost, so, because um, obviously I don't need two iPads, but um, is it worth the upgrade? Uh, if you've got the money where you can offset the cost, yes. Um, but if you've got, prior to the original iPad Air, like a, especially an iPad Air 2, 3, or 4, um, worth the upgrade. I would totally, totally upgrade, especially coming from an iPad Air 2. This is just going to be smoking. Um, <clears throat> But again, a lot of my gripes, supposedly, just a little rumor um, at the end of the year, Apple is supposed to be uh, basically unveiling a 12.9 inch iPad Pro is what the rumors say. Who knows what Apple will call it. Um, and hopefully, um, again, this is a Surface Pro 3. I love it. But if Apple would make a essentially their own version, a 12.9 inch uh, iPad Pro, where I could do true multitasking, Maybe have a keyboard cover uh, similar to this uh, where I could use a mouse and I could actually use this for productivity. I would, I would buy it in a heartbeat. Um, that would, to me, that's my uh, dream iPad would be like an iPad Pro. like Maybe a variant between an iPad Air and an iPad where you got an Air, detach the screen, you got an iPad. Um, whether Apple will ever do that, probably not, but wishful thinking. But anyway, uh, overall, a phenomenal device this 
far as a pure tablet experience, this is the king. Uh, you can't beat this one currently. I love my Surface Pro 3. Uh, overall, the Surface Pro 3 is a is a better device just because you can do, you got a PC and a tablet, but as far as just pure tablet, um, you can't beat this. Um, hands down, uh, right now this is the king of the hill. So um, with that, I hope you enjoyed that review. If you have any questions or want to know anything or see anything, let me know. Like I said, um, don't get the 16 gigger. Just, it's just not worth it. Um, so I'm going to restore this and return it today and get the 64 gigabyte model. But with that, um, beautiful device, just a few minor gripes. So hope you enjoyed that video. Thanks.